Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. This is uh, day two of looking at the Jason Stevens 2010 Estate Rosé. This is again 100% Cabernet Franc. And the reason why we're revisiting it is because inside, let's see if you guys can see it. You see that little uh, bubbly thing there? That's a diaphragm floating on top. Uh, it's called the wine shield. And so these guys are kind of the alternative to sticking a, a fancy vacuum seal inside of your uh, wine or, or putting one of those uh, one of those blingy uh, wine stoppers that usually don't really do anything uh, inside your bottle. So you'll notice like the top, there's, there's nothing there. There's no cork inside. Uh, we're a little bit less than 24 hours afterwards. And I, I did want to revisit this rosé real quick just to see um, if it's still holding up. Uh, I, I should let you know this was sitting in the fridge uh, overnight, so that does have an effect. We would expect that um, it's not going to, <clears throat> the wine wouldn't uh, oxidize as quickly uh, inside of a fridge. Um, and along with, you know, a, a, a closure system like a wine shield, I'm expecting a lot of the same flavor profiles. I did have this sitting on the counter for the last uh, two hours or so, so it is as close to room temperature as, as uh, you know, as close as I would want to get. Um, and, and it is a, it is a chilly uh, 64 degrees inside uh, the home right now. Uh, so let's take a look. Of course, you know, colors looking exactly the same. It's kind of neat. The wine shield just kind of, you know, floats out of the way when you're, uh, when you're pouring this puppy. Um, so of course, you know, colors the same. It's kind of like an orangish, pinkish, coppery, uh, type of light red tone. Again, with these rosés, you're talking about a, a dry, crisp type of wine. And on the nose... You know, uh, I'm trying to, th I, I didn't look back at my notes from yesterday, but I am getting, you know, some of those citrusy notes. I am getting a little bit of, uh, I'm getting a little bit of minerality. I am, it's, it's weird. I didn't mention this before and I, I don't, uh, you know, it, it almost smells a little woody. I don't believe they put this on, on any oak, and, and you probably would have noticed it more yesterday if they did, but there is this sort of dusty component that I'm getting. Getting a little bit of apple on the nose this time. So, you know, in a way, it, it has opened up a little bit more than, than last time, um, you know, but, but but not too much. That's not what we want with a with a, a closure like this. Let's uh, go into the flavor here. And you know, in the mouth again, really dry, really crisp. I am getting a little bit of like a, like a peach or a nectarine that I wasn't getting before. I am getting a little bit of like um, some apple characteristics, more as, you know, compared to last time, it was more of a, of a red fruit uh, and citrus. And again, that citrus is still there. That minerality is still there. Um, it just seems like those red fruits are more transitioning to like uh, core type of fruits, like, like peaches and apples and, and things like that. But I mean, of course, the wine, 24 hours, uh, with the wine shield in there, in the fridge, still holding up. And, and in a way, I, I'm, I'm kind of liking it a little bit more today than I did yesterday. So, so something to keep in mind with this 100% Cabernet Franc uh, Rosé from Jason Stevens. And again, with the wine shield uh, as the stopper inside of there. Now, I'm going to set this stuff aside because, you know, I like to switch things up a little bit. I know the last time I opened up a sparkling wine uh, on this show, it didn't turn out that well, and I was, I was thinking back on it, and a big reason why 
um, uh, upon reflection was I had just brought it back from the grocery store. It was probably sitting in my fridge for about 30 minutes before I went to open it up. Um, and if your sparkling wine is not well chilled, you know, that is in a sense a, a recipe for disaster. I mean, it was kind of cold, but you know, so for this right here, I, I came back from uh, the store about two and a half hours ago. And what I did was I, I wanted to make sure that I, I got it chilled as quickly as possible. I did throw this in the, uh, throw it in the freezer for about 45 minutes. I set an alarm so I didn't forget about it. Uh, and then it's been in the fridge for the, the rest, you know, hour and, and 45 minutes. Um, and this is the, gosh, I'm going to feel bad because this is a, this is a cava. So this is the, you know, the sparkling white wine of Spain and you know for a cava it's got very a, a Frenchy sounding name this is the M uh, Chavalet or something uh, this is the Carte Noir uh, Brut this was uh, $4.99 at Trader Joe's and, and this is a, a wine that I've had uh, I had a while back probably probably about uh, maybe a year and a half ago was the last time I had this. Um, and I just kind of wanted to revisit it. I wanted like a, a quick, uh, cheap, sparkling uh, to go with the veal piccata that I'm going to be making later tonight. Uh, and, and I thought we could revisit just, you know, opening some uh, champagne, some sparkling wine, some cava. And, and cava is kind of neat because it is a, a way cheaper alternative, uh, a cheaper quality alternative to the more expensive champagne and even the higher end uh, California sparkling white wines. Now, here we go. We got the cage. Cage is locked. I am going to put my thumb over the top here and I am not going to release it until I've taken the cork out because now I am unlocking this cage. Keep your eyes on the sparkler as soon as that cage is unlocked, all right? And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> very gently, without messing stuff up, got my wine glass ready, and my decorative balls, I'm just gonna turn that bottle ever so gently, ever so gently, right? We don't want this cork flying across the room. We don't want it foaming over like it did last time. We're going to pay attention, we're gonna let this bottle and this cork speak to us, and I feel it starting to come out. And I'm just going to be very gentle with it. I want to just gently release some of the air from this. I don't want what happened last time. I'm thinking positive thoughts. Everybody think with me. Mecca lecca hi. Mecca honey ho. I'm scared. I, I gotta be honest. I'm a little scared. It's, it's coming. It's been coming the whole time, but I just want to... Uh, <laughs> I just don't want to mess up for you guys. I, I'm Normally, I do this really quick. Here we go. Like that! Let's try this sucker. And I gotta say, this bottle is real cold, so I'm gonna set it down. And, and again, the, the Carte Noir. Uh, brute Cava, four ninety nine at Trader Joe's. Color, you know, it's a it's a pale yellow uh, straw, not really golden, but but going in that direction. Uh, you know, the bubbles a little bit bigger than the last sparkler that I opened for you guys. Um, you know, I, I see some smaller ones uh, in the middle of the uh, glass, but, but really a lot of bigger bubbles around the outside. Um, not as fine, not as delicate per se. Uh, stick the nose in here. Wow, it's nice. I'm getting a little, uh, little green apple, little peach, kind of reminds me of that rosé. I'm getting like some bready characteristics, some brioche. And, and some nice minerality there. Let's, uh, I guess I shouldn't be swirling this too much, but uh, let's give it a little whirl. Mm. 
Nice. You know, there's this big hit of, of lemon, citric, acid uh, up front. There is some nice creaminess to this as the bubbles kind of roll around over your tongue. They're bringing this creaminess along with those bready characteristics, but there's this really nice uh, citrusy acidity that's just sticking around, and I think this is the perfect complement to a, a light uh, chicken dish. I think it's the perfect complement for Mexican food. I mean, this is really a, a nice, food-friendly, cheap, everyday sparkling wine, and I'm, I'm really kind of stoked on it. Let me get another, give it another whirl here. A little bit of that uh, green apple skin. This is, this is really nice. Um, you know, giving it a, an 87 and telling you to go buy this right now. Uh, the next time you are cooking a meal for your loved one and you want to impress them but you don't want to spend a whole lot of dough, pick this thing up. Everybody, stay rad.